Hey folks, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding on Triumph's 2021 Tiger 850 Sport. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. Well folks, there it is. Triumph's 2021 Tiger 850 Sport. Now, this is a new motorcycle Triumph has introduced for the 2021 model year. This vehicle represents Triumph's entry-level mid-sized adventure touring rig. So it slots in below the existing Tiger 900 family. Now it's a little confusing because this motorcycle, the platform is based off the Tiger 900, but because they wanted everyone to know that this will be the entry level vehicle, they introduced the 850 nomenclature. This 850 Sport is powered by Triumph's 888cc i3. It has a different state of tune designed to make it more friendly to ride. Of course, because it's a 888cc i3, it's still going to have plenty of power. I like the styling of this motorcycle. Of course, it's an adventure bike. It's going to have the adventure beak love it or hate it i do like the led headlamps on this motorcycle it pays homage to triumph's roots without it being silly looking like the street and speed triple i'm not a big fan of the bug eye look anymore cast alloy wheels non-adjustable suspension aside from manual preload adjustment on the shock and a little bit more simple electronics allow this motorcycle to carry an MSRP of just under $12,000. That's $2,700 less than the base Tiger 900 motorcycle. It's a big savings and it makes this motorcycle much more competitive in the mid-sized road ADV market. But enough talking about the 2021 850 Sport. Let's swing a leg over it and see what it's like to ride. Well, folks, a traditional mechanical key embossed with the Triumph logo. Very nice. I like this bike already. And away we go. Right away sitting on this Tiger 850 Sport. It's a very comfortable bike. The inline three engine configuration makes for a very slim riding position. The handlebar has a nice bend for street use. There's a lot of rearward sweep and it's wide. So for street riding, this handlebar would be great. For dirt bike riding, it wouldn't be so good because it's so low and swept back. I like the seat on this bike. Not only is the seat super comfortable and wide, but you can adjust the seat height really easily. Triumph has this ingenious little cam system where you just slide this little bar between one of two positions and you can raise or lower the seat by nearly an inch. I have the seat in the higher setting. I used it a little bit in a lower setting, but God, it made this bike just feel like a mini bike because I was sitting so low. But if you're someone who's height challenged, you're gonna like the, the low position of the seat. And then conversely, if you're a little bit taller, the higher seat setting just makes this motorcycle feel substantially more like a full-sized bike, which I do like. Windshield on this bike is adjustable. It's manually adjustable. We have it in its highest setting right now. And the windscreen does a good job of shielding the rider from the elements. Instrumentation, we have this nice color TFT display. This instrument panel has a nice crisp font and it is fairly easy to read. 
Uh, it's worth noting though, at night, you want to make sure to put it in low contrast auto mode because if it's in high contrast mode like it is now, the instrument screen is so bright that it literally blinds you. You can't see anything when you're riding. So make note of that if you're riding after hours, you want to make sure that that screen is in the auto setting, not high contrast. And you can do that via this switch gear here on the left hand side handlebar. You just press that and you can adjust it very easily. We'll just scoot in front of these guys here. We got a little bit of a cluster here, but we'll go right now and it's all good. Powering the 850 Sport is a 888cc i3 inline 3 12 valve dual overhead cam. This is the same powertrain that that's used in the Tiger 900, but Triumph has detuned this engine. Horsepower has been reduced to right around 84 horsepower, it says, and torque has been reduced too, and that is to make for a more friendly riding experience. I've never ridden the Tiger 900, so I can't tell you if this thing is that much slower than that bike, but this, this, these Triumph i3s, I always really like them because they have a ton of torque. So it doesn't matter, the, the capacity of the engine has always got a lot of torque. And of course, they sound really awesome too, and they're smooth. So for an entry-level adventure bike, or a mid-sized entry-level adventure bike, I don't think anyone's going to be thinking that this bike doesn't have enough power because the thing definitely gets up and goes. And the great thing about these Triumph i3s is just how much immediate torque they have. And from the minute you let out the clutch lever, the thing just has pull. You don't have to rev this engine very high to get it to go. But if you want to rev it high, you can do that too. And just the sound, listen how cool it sounds. Six speed transmission with a cable actuated clutch. The clutch lever and the brake lever have adjustment, so you can adjust the position of the levers based on the size of your hands. I have a little bit smaller hands, so I always like the control surfaces very, not very near the handlebar, but closer rather than farther away from the handlebar, so I can grab them extremely quickly if I have to. Transmission feels really solid, really precise engagement between each of the six gears. Chain final drive on the left hand side of the vehicle puts power back to the rear wheel. This particular motorcycle is shod with a 1917 inch wheel combo, cast wheel combo, shod with Michelin Anarchy Adventure tires. This is an 80-20 style adventure tire from Michelin. So obviously the 19 inch, 17 inch wheel combo isn't going to be the most optimum for off-road riding. Now it's not terrible, a 1917 setup's actually pretty good, especially when you're talking about having something that works good on the street and dirt and has that middle ground. That setup usually has better middle ground than a 2118 in theory. But these days, 2118 setups, you can buy such high performance road tires and even high performance intermediate tires that work both well, both on the pavement and dirt that it almost makes the 1917 setup almost archaic. But 1917 inch wheel setup, cast wheels, so that's gonna limit how hard you're gonna be able to hit obstacles. A spoked wheel setup is generally gonna give you uh, a little bit more uh, strength, especially when you're hitting little holes or obstacles on the dirt. Just over seven inches travel 
suspension travel up front just under seven in the rear the fork one of the things about this 850 sp sport is the fork doesn't have any adjustments fixed damping the rear suspension is preload adjustment only oh i love this road i'm so happy right now and this bike god it is so maneuverable triumph always does a does a really good job making motorcycles that are extremely maneuverable with a tank of fuel with a 5.2 gallon tank of fuel this motorcycle weighs right around 460 pounds probably just a little bit over that and this bike is exceptionally agile again i like how wide the handlebar is i like the rearward sweep which is great for road riding but for off-road riding it's not as ideal And this motorcycle handles very nicely the suspension is a little bit on the plush side of things it works with the seat height being a little bit low even in, in its higher position this motorcycle handles and feels in general eerily similar to big reds parallel twin 500x bike which i'm sure triumph will not want to hear that but this is motorcycle feels very similar to that bike only with an extra cylinder and more power but generally this thing rides very well on pavement we're not going to have a chance to ride this vehicle off-road we only had a short duration loan for this motorcycle so we didn't have a top chance to ride it off-road maybe next time we did ride this motorcycle after hours and the led lighting that this bike has is just awesome it is so bright the, the light stream that this headlight throws off is very good I wouldn't say it's it's better than the some of the finest LED light setups we've tested this past year, but it definitely is good and ranks in the 90th percentile of modern LED light setups, which is nice. Again, you got to make sure you turn off the contrast mode on the screen and put it in auto or black mode where it's black face white fonts because if you don't do that the the display is so bright it's going to blind you speaking of the display via this switch gear on the handlebar you can actually maneuver through the various modes we have two riding modes road and rain we have display setups triumphs always really good about giving a lot of user adjustability in the way the information is displayed on the dashboard some people might think it's a little gimmicky myself included but it's still a nice touch that other manufacturers don't offer the triumph does now we talked about the fuel capacity, 5.2 gallons of gas this thing holds. We've been averaging right around 40, 41 miles per gallon. So you're gonna be able to go 200 miles on a tank of gas, which is nice. So many motorcycle manufacturers these days put such small capacity fuel tanks on their bikes, which just is ridiculous to me and makes it so you can't go very far between Phillips. 5.2 gallon capacity fuel tank on this bike is very it's good you know i wish it was even bigger but it's definitely on the upper end of fuel tanks sizes all right in top gear at 78 miles per hour we are pulling just under 5,000 rpms there is a hint of engine vibration that can be felt through the controls but it isn't off-putting it's not excessive we can hear quite a bit of noise through the tires especially the front tire which is surprising 
Usually Michelin does a very good job of having quiet tires, but I'm hearing quite a bit of road noise through that tire. Perhaps maybe it's the more aggressive tread pattern, but definitely some road noise going on from beneath the vehicle. No cruise control, no heated grips. All motorcycles should have cruise control and heated grips these days. So that is a knock against the bike. A slipper type, slipper action type clutch is integrated into this vehicle that helps reduce the chance of instability if the rider downshifts in too low of a gear for vehicle speed travel. I love slipper clutches generally because you can slide the bike very nicely when you're entering a corner but ABS always on fixed ABS mutes that and allows does not allow for any sliding brakes Geez, I love the brakes on this bike. Perhaps they're a little bit overkill based on the design of the bike. This 850 Sport uses Brembo Stalena radial mount calipers. These are a high-end caliper from Brembo. Tons of rigidity. They look awesome. They're lightweight, lots of power. This bike has a nice radial mount radial pump, I'm sorry, radial pump style master cylinder. And this bike has really good stopping power. Fixed always on ABS ensures that either the front or rear wheel will not lock up if you use the brakes in a very aggressive manner or if you squeeze the brakes over slippery surfaces, which is nice. I still wish you could disable ABS when you're riding in the dirt or you want to have some fun and slide the bike but it's neat that this bike has such high-end brakes but at the same time because the fork is has no damping adjustment the brakes almost overpower the dynamic of the vehicle to a certain extent just because the fork doesn't have enough support to really allow you to really use those brakes with authority so kind of odd that you put such high-end components but then kind of skimp on other ends of the bike. But whatever. And I love the power of this bike and the character of these Triumph i3s are fun. Oh geez, so fun we are going 90 miles per hour. This motorcycle does give a very nice ride. Triumph Engineers in England, their road testing department is one of the better road testing departments out of all of the motorcycle OEMs. And these bikes always ride really well in terms of comfort. And this Tiger 850 Sport is no different. This thing glides over the road and delivers a very regal ride. Kudos to Triumph. Apart from the noise I'm hearing up here, the road noise from the tire or the front fender or whatever is going on, this is a very comfortable riding position. The mirrors do a nice job of showing you what's going on behind you. Because of the inherent engine vibration, the mirrors are clouded a little bit, but they're still rather functional. These Triumph Tiger 850 Sports are assembled in Thailand. Triumph has a factory in Thailand where it does final assembly for some of its vehicles and this 850 Sport comes from that factory. Triumph, despite where it's made, all Triumph motorcycles come with a two year warranty, two years. It's pretty good. Maintenance intervals on this vehicle are few and far between. After initial 600 mile service, this bike requires oil service every 4,000 miles. 
I'm sorry, not 4,000 miles, every 6,000 miles. We're only talking about every 6,000 miles it needs oil service, and then every 12,000 miles you are supposed to check the valve clearance. So this motorcycle is, is devoid of much maintenance, which I like. European motorcycle manufacturers always get a bad rap for requiring ridiculous service intervals. And some of them still do require ridiculous service intervals, but Triumph is not one of them. These motorcycles are built to last just with minimal maintenance, just like many Japanese motorcycle manu manufacturers. So good job, Triumph. We appreciate the thought you put into these vehicles. This 888CCI3 puts out some engine heat that you can feel on your legs and your knees especially. It's 69 degrees Fahrenheit right now, so it's not exactly a really warm day, nor is it really cool. So this engine heat's actually kind of nice keeps my legs nice and toasty but if it was warmer than that that engine heat could definitely get annoying it is quite surprising how much how much engine heat this bike puts off uh, to the legs again because it's cool out we're not gonna have it be a knock but if it was 80 90 100 degrees out you would not like that engine heat on that this bike emits. Well folks, that was a fun ride on Triumph's 2021 850 Sport Tiger. There's a lot of things I like about this motorcycle. It rides so well in terms of its suspension plushness and how it floats over the road. The ergonomics are very nice for road use. And of course, that signature Triumph i3. Lots of torque, smooth, and great character. Problem is, this motorcycle throws off a lot of engine heat. A lot of engine heat, the front tire makes a lot of road noise, and this motorcycle is just, it is positioned as a very much a road bike. If you were someone who was even mildly serious about off-road riding, this bike would not be the right one for you. All right, guys, let's field some questions from the interwebs. This or the F900XR, that's a great question. Those bikes, these bikes are, those bikes are very similar in that they are very heavily road-based. Because this bike has an extra cylinder, I would probably go with this. I always like bikes with more cylinders. The more cylinders, the better now and for always. How much this bike is $12,000, which is a little bit less expensive than the 2020 Tiger 900 and a couple grand less expensive than the new 2021 Tiger 900 line up. Are factory hard bags available? Triumph has a lot of accessories for this motorcycle, so you can customize it and tweak it to the way you want. One cool feature that it has that's not an accessory is the 12 volt power plug beneath the instrumentation. Of course, you need an adapter so you can power modern cigarette lighter sized plugs with that adapter because it's smaller but you can do it versus the africa twin how is this versus the africa twin africa twin well this is in a different league than the africa twin africa twin has a lot more displacement it is a full sized bike but that said for only a couple grand more than this bike you can be into an africa twin and that is the direction i would steer what's the range like we talked about it 5.2 gallon fuel tank you can go 200 miles on a tank of fuel which is awesome should one consider this instead of the 900 gt well this is a good 
road going adventure bike so if someone wants to have that adventure bikey kind of look but still have good road performance and comfort this motorcycle would be good how does it compare to the Tenere 700 well those two bikes are absolutely fully different this is a road going adventure bike and the Tenere 700 is a legitimate off road going mid sized ADV bike this thing is going to be far superior on the road the Tenere is going to be far superior off road so you have to figure that out but overall I would probably take the Tenere 700 just because I like to whoop it up in the dirt does it feel top heavy like the old Tigers no all modern Triumph vehicles have very good CG engineering they all carry their weight very low they're very maneuverable bikes and they are not top heavy this thing has a super low seat too so if you are a smaller rider you are going to do very well with this bike all right guys that's a wrap of this episode of mc commute would i spend my twelve thousand us dollars for this motorcycle i would not this motorcycle is just a little bit too budget for me also when I buy an adventure bike I want an adventure bike that can actually take me to far away places without breaking down or having any problems or at least mitigating those things and this bike just isn't designed for off-road use so I would not buy this motorcycle but if you're looking for a good road going ADV bike that has a three-cylinder engine has a little bit more power than other motorcycle manufacturers in that segment this twelve thousand dollar triumph would be a good option it's got fantastic headlights pretty good fit and finish two-year warranty that awesome triumph sound and riding dynamic so if you're that type of rider this bike could fit free for you make sure to surf on over to motorcyclistonline.com that's where all my written content lives and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.